for the better part of a year. Baltimore Police Commissioner Richard Worley calling juvenile crime a struggle to get under control. Unfortunately, we, we find young people committing more violent acts now with handguns. It was a double shooting of a 14 and 16 year old last Easter Sunday, causing the mayor to take swift action. We are going back to the old days. We will be enforcing the youth curfew in Baltimore as we move into the latter spring and summer months. But those words did little to curb juvenile crime. From a robbery in Butchers Hill. He tackled me and then um, punched me in the head and I got kicked. I was afraid I was going to get shot because you just don't know. To an attempted carjacking in Federal Hill. They had a whole scheme going. One grabbed my keys, the other one sucker punched me twice. To a stolen vehicle in Northeast Baltimore. How was you gonna step on the pedal? How was you gonna hit the brake? How was you gonna see over the console? We've heard from victims who say there's been no limit to the brazenness and no sign of fear of the consequences. They had a screwdriver. They could have stabbed me if they really wanted to. You know, that's not okay. Something must be done. I mean, they can't just be, you know, uh, committing crimes and just being slapped in the wrist. They're laughing at these politicians' face. And it's not just crimes of opportunity. Last September, a 12-year-old was shot outside of a Dunbar High School football game. Police later arresting a 15-year-old one month later in October. At 0750 hours this morning, there was a call for service in reference to a shooting at Carver High School. Two 15-year-olds were shot during an argument, as well as a 16-year-old innocent bystander before the first bell rang. Police say the two 15-year-olds were the shooters. And in December, Fox 45 News is following breaking news out of Carver Votech. Right now, what we understand, a student and teacher were stabbed. Police arresting another student in relation to that stabbing. They say happened during an argument while class was in session. Now, Fox 45 has also investigated gaps in GPS monitoring for juvenile offenders. At least two juvenile suspects in the Brooklyn Day mass shooting, the unnamed 14-year-old and 18-year-old Tristan Jackson, were reportedly wearing ankle monitors and under DJS supervision at the time of the shooting. DJS placed the ankle monitor on Jackson after he brought a loaded gun to Mervo High School. Now, Fox 45's Vincent Hill joins us now in studio. Vincent, we've talked about those issues with GPS monitoring and how kids and teens have often find ways to get around it. We've also heard from parents about that as well. What have you heard? Yeah, Mackenzie, I spoke with a mom whose son was charged with a robbery near Morgan State, and you also talked to a mom whose daughter was accused of stealing cars, both saying home detention did nothing to keep their kids out of trouble. I called the probation parole office, asked them, can I pay them to pay him on the back? He violated three times, but nobody in the system knew. I had to let his PO know. When she came home, she went out school call that night and been getting arrested since on home detention. On home detention, they still won't do nothing. They won't violate her. Now, Vince, do we know how many juveniles have been charged with murder this year? Well, McKenzie, the short answer is no. According to the state's attorney's office, most of those cases go directly to the adult system, so they actually have to get that data from another division in that office. But last week, you may recall, a 15-year-old turned himself in for the shooting death of 14-year-old Jasper Davis at the Mandaman Metro Station. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Vince, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be My sure pleasure. to keep up with all of these stories. I'm Kai Jackson. Thank you for watching. Here's another video to watch. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel.